Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. A two-year-old child presented to ER with history of uprolling of eyeballs and neck stiffening lasting for about around five minutes associated with fever. On initial PAT assessment, appearance, the baby is drowsy, sleeping in mother's lap cal calmly, breathing, no increased work of breathing, uh, color is pink. Primary survey, airway, there is no gurgling sounds or no pooling of secretion, so we assume the airway is patent. Breathing, respiratory rate is 24 per minute, saturation 98 percentage on room air, air entry bilaterally equal. Circulation, pulse rate is 102 per minute, BP 87 by 57 millimeters of mercury. Uh, disability, uh, baby is drowsy but arousable. Uh, on exposure, temperature is 101 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, so, we have given paracetamol uh, per rectal suppository 15 mg per kg coming about. Weight of the baby was 11 kg, 165 mg and started tepid sponging and GRBS was 98 milligram per deciliter. Coming to sample history, uh, a 2 year old child, male child was brought to ER with history of uprolling of eyeballs and neck stiffening which was lasting for 5 minutes. He was having a nasal block and mild fever since 3 days. Child received a pulse dose of OPV one day back following which he was having a high grade fever and one episode of seizure. No history of any trauma any focal neurological deficits or any drug intake. Allergies, no drug allergies, no regular medicines, no similar history in the past. Immunization, last immunization was about 16 to 18 months that age immunization, DTP booster, IPV booster, hip and hepatitis A2. Last meal, 2 hour back. Development, it's normal up to the age. He can uh, actually talk 2 to 4 word sentences, parallel play, walks alone, walks up steps uh, and stack 4 and more blocks. On examination, baby is drowsy but arousable, no palarectal cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, anterior fontanella is closed, no morphological abnormality seen in the baby. Systemic examination, uh, no focal neurological deficits and uh, respiratory system was normal, uh, no crepes or anything was there. CVS, S1, S2 normally heard, per abdomen soft, non-tender. Diagnosis? Uh, febrile seizures. Okay. So, now... <coughs> Febrile seizures you said, but I want to add an adjective also. Simple, ah, it's a simple febrile seizure. So that's a clarity of thought that you should have in your mind. So uh, it's a very clear, straightforward case. Uh, Two-year-old, which is a classical peak incidence yes. age. The child had a fe uh, fever okay. history. And on top of that, the child has come to the ED with an episode of seizure. So it's a simple febrile seizure. So uh, first of all, why we said it is simple febrile seizure? One, two, three, four reasons you have to tell me. Simple. One, one is age group. One is the age group. And so, what is the age group to say that it is a simple febrile seizure? Six months to six years. Six months to six years. Okay. Then, next and, one. Uh, the, it is associated with high-grade fever. It is associated with the high-grade fever. Okay. And uh, it is a generalized seizure. Not it like is focal. a generalized seizure. It is not focal or uh, it is not a, a partial seizure. Then. Not recurring in 24 hours. Not recurring. Single, single episode, episode in 24 hours. Then. No other focal neurological and deficit. regaining consciousness Fitness, uh, uh, and regaining, regaining consciousness. Probably the child is sleeping sleep. post actually or child is sleeping. Okay. So by this criteria, we are saying it's a simple uh, febrile okay. seizure. So complex partial seizure, anything against this. Okay. If age group more than six okay. years or less than six months, or regaining multiple episode in okay. last twenty four hours, not generalized. It is focal okay. or partial seizures or else the patient is having not regaining consciousness, then that is complex partial seizure and simple seizure. Okay. Now we have to tell what is status epilepticus. Okay. Status epilepticus, a simple febrile seizure can become a status okay. also. So what is the clinical definition of status epilepticus? It's more than 5 minutes seizures occurring okay. or in between there is not regaining consciousness. In between two seizure episodes, <laughs> if the child has not regained consciousness or the initial seizure, seizure episode is not set like within 5, five minutes. minutes. So that we label it as status epilepticus. So we have to differentiate the causes of seizure depending upon the age group. Mm. So this age group, what we are suspecting is we are suspecting a probably a febrile okay. seizure. But if the same child, there is no history of fever, he had come with seizure episode to you. So what all will be a uh, uh, differential diagnosis? A traumatic uh, trauma can be a okay. And then any electrolyte imbalances or okay. hypoglycemia. Okay, okay. Um, then uh, mm. can it be seizure disorder as such? Can it be seizure disorder as such? And you should be knowing there is some entity. Suppose if the child is not having a fever, 
within 24 to 2 weeks there was an episode of fever there is something called as f i r e s fires febrile infection related epilepsy syndrome so that the classical history you will have seizures multiple episode but when you look into the history of fever you won't get immediate fever history we won't get but some fever history is there within last two weeks then you are not having active fever you need to keep into your consideration of f i r e s so that's one of the differential diagnosis that you need to keep in this mind so their treatment is totally different you need to give antiepileptic phenobarbital and all those things but if the patient is not improving there is a role for pulse steroid ivig there is some autoimmune mediated issue so ivig plasma pharesis then tocilizumab Anakindra, there are a lot of drugs like immunomodulators also needed to be considered that insulin is slowly picking up. So when we generally speak about a febrile seizure, it's approximately 5% is the incidence. Like uh, I had a febrile seizure in my childhood. So that's a very important history. So febrile seizure, I had three episodes when I was in child. So three recurrence rate also you should know. What is the recurrence rate of febrile seizure? A simple febrile seizure. You need to, you are sending off the child uh, uh, from the ED. Mm. You should tell them there is a possibility that this child might come back again with seizure. So the key thing that you need to ask is that if it's the first episode, there's almost 30 to 50 percentage to have a recurrence. But if there is a family history, if my son is at a seizure and there's a high incidence that he's going to get another seizure, family history and age of onset of seizure is very important. So these things, if it is like there is a risk factor, you have the major risk factor, you have to think that, okay, there is a high potency that this child can come back. The routine patients is like 30 to 50, but who has this higher risk factor? It is like 70 to 80 percent. They can have a second episode of seizure and they can come back to the ED. So that's the differential diagnosis. So now let's uh, see uh, what are the seizure mimics. Here it's a febrile seizure. What are the seizure mimics? In a children, in adult patient, we know what are the possible different. In children, what are the different things that you need to think? One, two, three, four. One is uh, chills and rigors of the fever can be a DD. Okay. And then um, breath holding spells. Breath holding spell. Very, very important. It's a breath holding spell. So what will be a classical presentation of a breath holding spell? What is the age group of breath holding spell? Uh, up to uh, five years. Up to 2 to 3 years will be the peak, maybe a little bit younger age group, like 12 to 18 months, less than between that. You can have uh, breath holding spells, the age group is right, but maybe in a little bit lower age group children, you will have more frequency of breath holding spell and usually it will have a trigger. It will have a trigger. So that is a trigger followed by breath holding spell and there will be history, there is a cyanosis and what will be the recovery? It will be a quick recovery. Once the breath holding spell will be hardly for few seconds and after that the child will be fully recovered. Mm -hmm. So that is how you have to differentiate. That is first differential diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Second differential diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Syncope. The classical syncope, syncope, what we see, the same thing can happen to your children also. Mm -hmm. So you have to differentiate whether it's a syncope. syncope. So the things that potentially say that it is a seizure, what are the potential things that points towards a seizure? You have a lateralizing, you have a jerky movements. Mm -hmm. You have flickering of the eyelids, you have dilated pupils, you have increasing the heart rate and increasing the blood pressure during the event, a classical postictal phase, maybe a tongue bite. So these are all classical. Bowel and bladder incontinence can happen both for syncope as well as seizure. So that is next differential diagnosis that you need to keep in your mind. Recovery in syncope will be much more quicker. So that is the second differential. Third one. Third differential is a pseudo seizure. Maybe a little bit on the adolescent age group. Adolescent age group, they can have hysterical reaction. So they can have mimic like seizure activity mm -hmm. and uh, they will have, uh, they will try to maybe doing uh, body jerky movements and all those things. So that also you need to uh, keep in your mind. So breath holding spell, then uh, single <coughs> pseudo seizures. So these are the common uh, differential diagnosis that you need to keep in your mind. And uh, definitely if there is no associated with fever, then you need to think about an evaluation further like electrolytes and all those things. But generally, in a simple febrile seizure, even your GRBS is not warranted. Even taking a GRBS is not required. Only thing that is required is a fever control. That is the only thing. Unless and until the child have got any other risk factor or any other signs. That is indicating to do an investigation. What are the investigations? So, whom need a blood investigation? So, the child look toxic. 
the child has got kernick sign brodinski okay. sign you think there is a part of meningitis 25% or 30% of the patients with meningitis they can present with first episode of seizure sure. so fever with seizure so they might need an lp study a ct imaging you are getting a focalizing focal neurological deficit and all those things you need to consider and next most important thing what you are when you are doing your examination mostly you have to look for any neurocutaneous markers in children especially and again hepatosplenomegaly because a glycogen storage disorder okay. so they all can come up with this yes. presentation so febrile seizure complex partial seizure fires and other differential diagnosis of seizure so these are the differentials what we need to consider but a simple febrile seizures doesn't need any evaluation unless and until you are suspecting an infection life threatening infection meningitis or any other focalization you are able to get you are seeing that fever episodes are not subsiding you need to evaluate then only you need to go ahead and evaluate otherwise routinely you can send them home by giving certain advice that will come to disposition part now the patient has come to the ed simple seizure how will you manage the uh, you said uh, temperature control so how will you plan your temperature control or you want to give any uh, benzodiazepines initially when the child is actively seizing in front of you so oh, if like if it's less than 5 minutes we if it is only more than 5 minutes we have to intervene <coughs> or else we will just do the temperature control and plan. okay i will because if the child is actively seizing in front of you it is always advisable to give a benzodiazepine It, it when you are seeing that you because the thing is that you won't get this time to take this all the history uh, whether it is a simple whether it is a complex partial seizure we will be having difficulty but if the child is seizing in front of you temperature control along with maybe a one dose of benzodiazepine 0.1 to 0.2 mg of any of the uh, standard benzodiazepine okay. either nasal spray, spray or buccal sub or, or perrectal or iv very rarely you need to iv but nasal spray is are available each shot will you give you 0.5 mg so that is well and good so that is one thing uh, that uh, you need to do so uh, next thing the seizure is not subsiding after 5 minutes then it's 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 a big an issue like status epilepticus we need to manage uh, we need to uh, give the second dose of benzodiazepine then followed by your phosphenetoin or phenytoin followed by phenobarbital and maybe propofol infusion that's all the standard status epilepticus management you need to keep in your mind then those group of patient definitely needs evaluation including a brain imaging lp study sodium all the electrolytes uh, maybe you need to look for other reasons autoimmune pathology all those things differential diagnosis of a seizure you need to keep in your mind but a simple partial seizure a uh, simple sorry simple febrile seizure we can just manage it with paracetamol alone and uh, you can uh, which age group you think you need admission whether this child was admitted or not uh, he was for 24 hour observation he was admitted okay and then it was no other uh, since there was no other seizure episodes he was discharged he was discharged it's always uh, when you have confidence in the parents that they will be able to manage you can think of even discharging the child if they are able to understand that well and if they know how to temperature do the temperature control it's advisable you can uh, discharge them but the problem is whenever you have a very lower age group like less than 6 months yes. and when you have an age group like above 6 years and all and there is multiple risk factor and it is somewhere like in between complex we are not very sure it is a simple or a complex complex definitely needed admission those group you should be admitting maybe this patient two day uh, two, two year old with the classical first episode you can have no problem in discharging him home unless and until the parents are educated well and uh, you have to tell educated means you have to educate them well telling them take him in the left lateral position or lateral position uh, not allowing the temperature to come up okay. that is again very key like if it is more than 40 degrees celsius is a usual cut off the child can have an again an episode okay. so uh, you need to tell them even before the fever comes they need to start giving antipyretics for the next 24 to 48 hours is very crucial so you need to bring it down and whenever they feel that the child has got any lateralization or any other vomiting headache persistent they need to bring back the child if they are confident enough then you can discharge otherwise it's always better to admit them for a day and keep under them for their observation so uh, febrile seizure uh, you want another question is that whether there is any role for uh, benzodiazepines as a prophylaxis for simple febrile seizure no prophylaxis is required but for a complex partial seizures maybe a benzodiazepine prophylaxis can be given so that is again a lot of uh, gray areas are there but still some of the pediatric neurologists still prefer to clobazam or some uh, any agent uh, they will give for this complex febrile seizures 
So there is a potency that the complex partial complex febrile seizure can turn into a seizure disorder also. So they wanted to prevent that and maybe not like in uh, phenytoin or phosphenytoin not required but definitely maybe smaller benzodiazepine can be prescribed for them. So uh, these are the differential diagnosis. Uh, you can tell what yeah, we have uh, prepared. No, he was uh, he was admitted for 24 observation. Mm. He started on clobazam uh, mm. prophylaxis and antibiotics. Labs were normal. So after two, 24 hours, he was discharged on clobazam prophylaxis. Mm. 5 MG, 5 ML. Uh, every day? Uh, no, BD for two days if there is high fever. Means when there is fever episodes starting, uh, then we will start. But when you look into the standard guidelines for simple febrile seizure, you need not give any of the prophylaxis. Standard guidelines, but it's any, you have in doubt whether it's a complex partial seizure, definitely complex febrile seizure, yes, you need to give them all prophylaxis. But otherwise, it generally it is not indicated. And uh, uh, which all patients uh, you have to admit, another group is no seizure with, there is no seizure. But uh, sorry, there is no fever, but there is seizure. So that group you should evaluate. Multiple episodes of so that's what complex febrile seizure. Even if there is no fever, and another entity, what I've told is F I R E S. That is one of the uh, these days we are seeing a lot of cases. Those group of patients requiring this anakindra, toclizumab therapies, and all. So that is now uh, slowly, slowly evolving because these children are coming back uh, with this thing. And another uh, important risk group where you wanted to admit is those who have not received. Vaccination for streptococcus uh, and, and uh, H influenza. H influenza. So those group of patients, they are at yeah. risk of developing a meningitis. Mm -hmm. So those group of patients, it is always better to admit. If they have taken vaccination adequately, everything is fine. Then there is no issue in uh, discharging them home. You have anything else to add on? Um, we uh, seizure when the when a <laughs> child comes with yeah. seizure. Uh, they approach for the etiology. Mm. Uh, if there is a non-trauma, then it will be accidental trauma, abusive head trauma. And if there is no trauma, look for focal neurological examination. If there are uh, no deficits, ask for fever. If there is fever, then it is febrile seizures, meningitis, and cephalitis. If there is no fever, then we should um, rule out electrolyte imbalances. And if there is electrolyte imbalance, it can be hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia. If there is no electrolyte imbalance, look for uh, dysrhythmia, QTC prolongation. Or if there is no uh, dysrhythmia then drug any look for any drug exposures and uh, in focal neurological uh, examination if there are deficits you have to rule out brain tumor AV malformations uh, uh, the head trauma also okay so the child was discharged. Child was discharged. So the take home message will be our uh, initial seizure management will be the same but except for the fever management yeah. which we need to go on a little bit aggressive and difference between a simple partial seizure, simple febrile seizure and a complex, complex febrile seizure differentiation and who needs to be admitted, uh, what are the differential diagnosis, what all things you need to do as an emergency physician, temperature control, benzodiazepine doses, 0 0.2 mg per kg body weight, then followed by your phenytoin, 15 to 20 mg per body weight, phenytoin, phosphenytoin, phosphenytoin can be given a little bit faster compared to phenytoin which is less irritable, phosphenytoin, then the next thing is phenobarbital, again 20 mg per kilogram and some Sometimes you can go into the newer uh, anti-epileptics uh, anti like levetiracetam also. Uh, the dosing ranges some 60 mg per kilogram body weight. That is the actual dose. But many a times we don't give that uh, that much uh, dose for all the patients. So uh, again, prophylaxis, clobazam is a drug that can be given for uh, complex febrile seizures. So uh, recurrence rate is very high. So you can uh, think of giving them on clobazam prophylaxis. And always, uh, all patient doesn't need an LP. But you have suspicion of a meningitis, Kernix, Vodansky or altered sensorium still persisting, go ahead and get an LP and uh, do a series of analysis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.